This looks like a good spot to camp. How you doing guys? Thanks for tuning in again. I'm back up north. I wanted to do an overnight bushcraft camp, something a little different than my last couple videos. So I'm up at this awesome property. It's a nice river down there. I've got some red pine up and behind me, and there is some um, hardwoods down to the left of me. I've been walking around for a few hours this morning. I'm a woodpecker. I've been walking around for a little bit this morning, just getting a lay of the land. I've seen so far some fiddleheads that are edible. I've seen some trillium. And I've been told, you guys hear, hear that woodpecker? I've been told there is leeks, wild leeks available too. So it looks like we're going to get a little bit of rain around 11 o'clock. It's just past 9 right now. So what I think I'm going to do is get my tarp set up, not worry about camp too much, get my tarp set up and go around and pick up some of these wild edibles I can find. Um, yeah, and then just set up here at the top of this river. Have a grand old time. Spend the night just relaxing. The mosquitoes are starting to come out pretty bad, um, but that's okay. Once the, the fire gets going, it should help. So I think I'm going to set up in this pine, this red pine stand behind me. But let me show you why I'm not going to set up right here on the edge. I'd love to. I'd love to set up an Adirondack style shelter right here on the edge and be able to look out and just kind of have the, uh, the river below me. But there's this large aspen that has fallen and just kind of hung up there. And that's right over top of where I would set up my shelter here. It's just not safe. So I'm just going to tuck back in a little bit. It's nice and flat back in there anyways. And I'll only have 10 feet to walk to get to the, to the cliff here. Let's do it. There's a few things I want to look for before I decide to have my camp here. Uh, safety was number one with that big aspen tree falling over, bringing it back here. But one of the other things is having a fire. And obviously in this pine forest, there's a concern of just duff on the ground, which would be needles and roots, <clears throat> excuse me, and just leaf matter, which is going to ignite and char and smolder and possibly burn the roots and, and have a forest fire, which is something I'm not going to be doing. So let's just dig down a little bit and see what kind of soil or earth we're working with. Okay, that's awesome. So you can see we have pine needles all the way down. Then we start to get into the duff, which is this organic matter, which is like decomposing pine needles and stuff. But then right underneath it, straight sand. Nothing could be better for a substrate for the ground. So this is gonna be totally fine. I'll dig down to sand and uh, yeah, sand is perfect. I'm gonna be using my Sil Nylon tarp, my nine by nine. I use, this is the same one I used in Algonquin on my last big trip video, my five day solo thing. Um, <clears throat> I got a lot of questions about it. This is the same tarp I've been using for years. I have two main ones. This is the one that Kyle made. So this is Sil Nylon again, 9x9, nine nine, bunch of tie-out points, great color. <clears throat> you, cannot, you cannot buy these. This is a one-off like years ago, but we are in the process of getting a bunch of these manufactured. We'll probably do a run of them. It might take a few months, might take even a half a year, but we're in the process of doing it. Same tie-out points, same material, same everything, same dimensions. So I think today what I'm going to do is do a high, a high set. That way I have a lot of room to work underneath and have my fire run right underneath, just kind of hang out if the rains do come. And even if not, I don't feel like I need a lot of wind protection today. Just something to keep maybe the smoke underneath my tarp to keep the bugs away. So I'm going to go above my head and set it up. Maybe from here to this one. I've already... I've already looked ahead above and there's no deadfall. So this cordage is what I use always to set this tarp up. There's a reason why. It's got these toggles. They're an old 
see the bugs? They're an old um, arrow shaft cut down and grinded down to make not hard or to make not um, sharp. And they're on prussics, which can slide, which allows me to tension my tarp very easily. So, and it's also on this cord, I believe it's called Night Eyes, this old reflective cord, which is smaller, lighter, and easier to, more compactable, I guess, than paracord. And strong, very strong. So I've already come around the tree. I'm gonna pinch my two ends together. I'm gonna take my tail, it's gonna go in the, inside the loop once, again inside twice, and then I'm gonna take it on the outside and put it through once. And now what that does is it allows me to tension it or loosen it over and over very easily. Let's say I never taught you nothing. Because this is not that big of a distance, probably right around nine feet across, my tarp is going to be close to the tree and it's going to be close to these um, old branches that are sharp. So I just want to go knock them down as much as possible to avoid any potential holes in my tarp. Why I like the toggles so well, it's super easy to connect and get on there. You're not running around trying to cut toggles and all that fun stuff. I think I'm gonna tie this last corner a touch lower than the other than the other corners. And that way, if it does rain, the rain will have somewhere to drip off of as opposed to pooling on the top and finding its own way down or whatever, spilling on my head. <laughs> so keep this corner a touch short. Again, top line hitch just so I can adjust. There we go. Ba bam. Ba bam. Oh yeah, just like home. I do want to clear away the sticks and stuff from my where I'm gonna sleep, but I don't want to clear away all this duff. All these needles is gonna make for a softer um, bed, which is okay, but the, the main reason is I don't want sand everywhere. I don't want sand in my sleeping gear and, and on me and stuff like that. It's, it's a pain in the butt, obviously. But it wants a sandy butt. So I'm gonna just pick out the pokies. I don't have a ground sheet. This my sleeping pad is gonna go <clears throat> right on the ground. So I'll just take a couple minutes here, like I said, pick up the sticks, leave the, the dove, and then where I'm gonna have my fire, I'll clear the, the whole thing away to the sand. This this spot here is the spot I'm gonna sleep at. It's the flattest. Uh, on this side of the tarp, and I'll have the fire on that side of the tarp. Oh, got a mosquito bite, bite right in the old dome, the old third eye. <laughs> These bugs are nuts already. So this is probably, well, for sure, pushing it for no bug netting. This is the last trip I want to do of the season without... Uh, without a proper screen. I'll probably start using my tent uh, from now on, but that's why I wanted to bring just the tarp and the uh, the wool blanket, because I haven't done a wool blanket spring thing yet. Um, but yeah, this is pushing it. She's uh, she's a bit buggy. I see black flies and mosquitoes. They're, they're all over my microphone, all over my face. <laughs> oh man, she's lumping up pretty good, bud. <laughs> Can you see out of it? All right. A cow? Wow. Is your cow? Bugs. You know what I might be able to do even? I might be able to 
lay this on the ground and just kind of wrap it over my body. That way my sleeping, my sleeping pad is getting a little bit more protection. I don't think it really needs it, but I don't really need all that extra wool blanket either. I don't need to double it up or anything. Maybe this way it will, yeah, this way it will protect my sleeping bag from the sparks of the fire as well, or my sleeping pad, I mean. So that can just, once I'm on there, get wrapped over top of me, we're good to go. That's not bad. Okay, cool. Oh, nice and flat. That spot is flatter than all my spots in my last trip combined. <laughs> now it's time to clear away a spot for the fire. It shouldn't be too difficult. Yep, yeah, there's the sand. Perfect, it's all wet. It's perfect. I don't need a big fire lay. I'm not going to be using the fire for warmth tonight. The wool blanket will do the trick. But I do want to have my fire here to keep down the bugs, like I was saying. And just for extra fun, camping style, you know? What's camping without a fire next to you? There, I'd say that this is big enough. I don't even need to line it with rocks. And the duff piled on the back and the sand is going to act like some sort of a uh, wind block and have the tra smoke travel up it. So, yeah, good stuff. I think what we're going to do now is go search around for some wild leeks, for some fiddleheads, see if I can get any crayfish. I did bring a small fishing rod, it's called the M rod. It's a packable rod, you can take the, take it apart somewhat, there we go. Um, but the thing is, this river does have trout, uh, steelhead running through it actually, I just missed it, missed it by a couple weeks. The water is very shallow as you saw before and there's no trout in it at all but i'm hoping i can find some crayfish or maybe some just scragglers or something but let's go down there explore a bit uh, i imagine we'll be down there for a couple hours looking for food so I'll bring a bag to put my stuff in and uh yeah wish me luck before i go down there i think i'm gonna spray a little bit with bug spray i'm just getting eaten here Mostly around my neck and my face are doing. It's the only thing that's exposed, I guess. Okay, let's play a game. You all know how obsessed I am with, with poops. Let's play name that scat. What type of scat is this? Tightly coiled with a hair at the end, a long hair at the end, lots of hair in it, wispy stuff at the end, almost completely made of hair. And then if you look here, the same thing. Wispy end, curly end almost with hair, tons of hair. Name that scat. Sweet, I'm on the right track. I found some trillium. There's one here, there's a bunch all under this pine. Um, trillium can be edible. The problem is, it's Ontario's wildflower and I believe it's illegal to pick it. I was doing some research and from what I can find you shouldn't be picking them. So we're not going to pick any of these. It's cool to find them. I'm glad that I found them. Uh, it tells me that the information about the leeks and the fiddleheads should be correct. So good. Very pretty flower. Ontario's trillium. So we have a normal trillium here, a white one, and then a purple one here. And I believe it has to do with the year. First year or second year gets purple. Somebody who knows for sure why they get the purple coloration, if it's the first year or second ones, or even if it's not that, let me know in the comments, please. I'm sure somebody knows. Damn. I was hoping there'd be a crayfish under there. Well, not looking very promising on the crayfish front. Or as you can see, the fish front. Just too late. You can see right through it. See how clear it is? It's super shallow. There ain't no steelhead running through here right now. And it doesn't look like it's any kind of panfish or any kind of bass or anything like that that frequent it. I don't even think bass is legal yet. It's not. It's not open yet. Ooh, 
buddy. So I guess I'm going to be doing wild edibles. Start better start finding some. <laughs> There's some fiddleheads all around here. They're a little bit too far gone, but there's some that are small still. And I'll pick. They still got the, the good curl on the head. So I'll get a bunch of these. For anyone wondering what fiddleheads are, they end up growing into uh, ferns. Not all fiddleheads are good to go, but these ones are. Try and look for the small, thin ones. They smell a bit like a cucumber. like the deepest part of the river. I can see right through and there's no fish at all. Too little too late Joe. Too little too late. Way up there. That's where my camp is. And those red pine. So well, that's my view from up there. Pretty sweet, eh? You'd be able to actually see my camp if I set it right up on the hill there. But I can see the wind starting to roll up there too, actually. The trees are starting to move back and forth. Leeks and crayfish are what I need now. I didn't bring any meat. I only have some rice and some, uh, I like two pieces of jerky or something like that. But regardless, wild foods it is. <laughs> Looking under these logs for some crayfish. <sighs> Reality check, Joe. This is a healthy river. I thought for sure there'd be crayfish. Oh, that wind, she's kicking up, bud. Not looking too promising guys. I'm uh, giving up on the trout for sure and the crayfish. I don't know man, I keep lifting up rocks and logs and everything and I'm only only ever finding like dragonfly larva and stuff like that. So <clears throat> might be doing a vegan day today unwillingly. I do have rice. No, I guess I do have those few pieces of uh, jerky that I can put inside my rice, which is okay. I'm not too worried about it. I brought a little amount of food on, on this trip on purpose. I will supplement. I will find, well, I did find those fiddleheads, and I hope to find leeks. I know what leeks look like. I deal with leeks all the time around my area. It's just that I'm not in my area. I don't know the lay of the land here. So we can continue looking. Rain seems to have been holding off. So that's good. It was supposed to have rained already. It's noon. Maybe I'll go up and uh, fry up some of my fiddleheads for lunch anyway. We'll make our way back up to the camp. I cannot find any leeks for the life of me. So I'm going to pick some dandelion leaves. These are going to add with my fiddleheads. Not half as tasty as leeks, mind you. Still edible. And not bad. I don't mind them. They're a bit bitter. Touch on the bitter side. Back at camp, and my head is cut out of frame. Oh, it's definitely warming up. Damn skeeters. I'd take off my sweater, but I'd eat eaten alive even more so. So, no leaks, as I said. Can't find them. I don't know. I looked everywhere. I looked up in the pine, which I didn't think it was going to be. I looked in the hardwood forest. I looked down by the river. I looked in the meadow. I looked in the field. And the van down by the river. I, uh, yeah, I can't find any, so that's okay. I got a healthy portion of dandelion leaves, like you saw, and fiddleheads. So this will be my lunch, and that's pretty cool. I've got this new to me titanium heavy cover frying pan. Super lightweight, but it is a little bit more durable than you'd see by Snow Peak or something like that. A little bit more heavy, uh, thicker, but that doesn't affect the weight really. It's 
pretty lightweight, fit right in the top of my backpack. I'm gonna fry these up with some butter. I did bring some, a little bit of butter as one of my foodstuffs, as well as, you know, the staple, m and peanuts. <laughs> um, super primitive, this trip. M&M &M, M &M primitive peanuts. Anyways, the trick with these, everybody says like, oh, you're gonna burn everything. You just gotta do low heat. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get a fire going just with sticks, probably pine twigs, because that's what I have right around me. So even though I'm gonna be using pine twigs, to start my fire, or to have fuel for my fire. I think I'm gonna walk out to the field and try and grab some old reeds, like um, some old grasses, or maybe some old uh, mullein stalks, something like that. Anyways, the field's right here, so here we go. <sighs> Darn, getting old, getting old. Okay, lots of stuff to pick from here. These old grasses will be perfect. I'll pick the ones that are still standing, nice and dry. These old milkweed stalks are going to be perfect. It's got thin at the top, thicker near the bottom, so I've got my grasses, old milkweed. I might not even need to use my, my uh, birch I collected to start the fire with. This is perfect. This is all disturbed soil here. That's where this stuff grows good. That's different. Wow, do you hear that bee? Super yellow fungus. Okay, well that's super easy, man. Just walked around, picked up a bunch of sticks, like bigger ones like this, to go on the ground, on the bottom, and then I was able to just grab a bunch of red pine twigs for kindling, and then I can go around and grab some more uh, fuel pieces as it's going, because I'll have some time. So, again, the reason we're putting this down is just to give it a buffer from the ground. <clears throat> I've got my, all my little starter pieces. This is my grass in here. Probably the most fibrous part, which I'll use to light it. I'm not gonna use my birch bark. And then I will take the tops of the old milkweed to lay on top, and then the bottoms to go next, and then my twigs. So really, I do have a few different sizes of kindling right off of here. To light the fire I have paper matches this time. There are a right way and a wrong way to light a match. Um, the wind's picking up right as I'm about to do this. So you don't want to do that. You really want to just protect the head with your finger, Ray Mirror style. going match just go away okay and that will go for a minute here as I make a mad dash to go grab some bigger pieces it's not really a mad dash that's gonna be good for a minute and the picking up bigger pieces is a matter of running around looking on the ground I'm picking up pieces that aren't soaking wet, which I just did here. It takes a matter of a second. Just like that, the bugs are gone. Gotta love it. I'm not gonna make it rip, roar, and fire. I'm not even gonna put anything on more than just twigs so that I can cook on the ash and the coals. Again, this is just my lunchtime fire. I don't need this to stay all day or anything. For my knife on this trip, I only brought my Swiss Army Bushcrafter. I got it in a Lone Woodsman EDC sheath. The sheath is pretty sweet. Uh, I talk a little bit, show a little bit more on my gear video, but uh, it's a brand new company. Anyways, I can keep the lanyard attached to the bottom and still use it. This is the Bushcrafter, the Swiss Bianco Bushcrafter. It's got the saw, or sorry, the knife blade, the awl, and the saw, and that's all. So this is my knife for this trip along with my 19 inch Wetterlings axe, my old school one. All I'm going to do 
cut up my fiddleheads a little bit, cut some of the stock off. Not too much. I'll keep some some stock on. But uh, this is a cool knife. I've used this knife on canoe trips before. Um, solely, I guess, in conjunction with the hatchet or something. Could probably even eat these stems. Maybe I'll just cut them up a little bit into pieces. The uh, the dandelion leaves are pretty straightforward. I'll put a link in the in the description to where you can get one of these Lone Woodsman EDC sheaths if you're interested in it. He's coming out with a few more leather products, uh, things that I have not seen from other people. He sent me a few, so I'm pretty interested in it. I know the owner. We go back to the old Bushcraft USA days. Met him up uh, in Ohio a couple times. The Lone Woodsman. What a good name. I don't know how that was still available either. So this is going to be very green. A very veggie lunch for old Joe, which is okay. That rain seems to be gone. It didn't rain, but the uh, the threat of it seems to be gone. Little head. You know what? I was planning on putting wild leeks in, but considering I can't find any for the life of me, I did bring a little chunk of garlic. So I'm going to throw that in with the, the fiddleheads, and I have some butter and salt, which I'll throw in as well. A hunk of garlic I'll just cut up a little bit, and then maybe I'll try and still find some after some leeks, but who knows. Are you guys sick of me singing yet? Garlicky. Okay, so that's there. I will add some butter as well. Keep everything lubed up, you know, keep it flowing. Get in there. Get in there. I do have salt as well. So I'll throw some salt on this, make this unhealthy as possible. Joe style. And they, these coals are almost ready. It's just uh, I gotta die down a little bit more. I didn't bring my spork on purpose, so I'm gonna make up a little stir stick slash eating utensil. I'm going to saw off this pine branch. I'm gonna saw it so it doesn't break out of on a jagged angle. A lot of them are really crappy and rotten, but this one. Seems to be holding on pretty good, so I don't want to break it off. I'm gonna saw it with my with my uh, Swiss Army bushcrafter. These saws are actually not bad. There is some resin in this. I can see it through the the sawdust coming out already, so it might not be a good uh, candidate, but we'll see. Yeah, there's resin all in that, but maybe I can shave it down. Yeah, you know what? It's only at the very end. You can see it's completely done. One, two. It's a little too hot still. So you see, especially that one's flaming up. Move the flamey stuff over. Try to cook just on ashy coals, not even on real coals, just ashy kind of coals. One, two, three, four. Yeah, it's not bad. So we'll keep moving it away from the heat too. We need, really need this butter to melt though. Coat everything. I'm happy to see that the handle is pretty sturdy. It's not flopping anywhere. It has this um, cinch, so you can't, so the way it closes obviously is you squeeze it, 
and it goes down. So if you put this lock on, you can't squeeze it so it won't accidentally fall on you. I think that's a really good, uh, oh, there's a piece of wood in my, I think that's a really good addition to it. Garlic's browning up nice. Nothing's burning. We're doing all right. They look a lot smaller once you start cooking them, eh? Been hungry. Oh snap! The garlic really imparted into the the fiddlehead. That's not bad at all. Not bad at all. All right, boys and girls, she's done. She is done. I'm excited. Look, it didn't stick. It didn't burn anything. You know what the secret is? Oil, grease, butter or oil grease or butter oh there's my plane following me around Ontario and low heat obviously you saw what I cooked on very low heat so my eating utensil didn't really turn out as an eating utensil I guess it's more of a stir stick but maybe now we'll see some garlic on there and a fiddlehead That's really good. I've had fiddleheads before. I just never put the garlic in with them. I was hoping to do the leeks, which would have been a wild garlicky onion kind of thing, which would have been, in theory, a lot better. This tastes really good, but it would have just been cooler, cooler. But anyways, the dandelion leaves. I got one on there too. They're shriveled up completely. I'm gonna show you. Oh, it's hot! Don't put it on your lap. Don't put it on your lap. Little dandelion leaf. All bitter. Bitter as the day is long. Oh my goodness. People put them in their salads and stuff, eh? The dandelion leaves. What? Yeah, really good. This would be really, really good with some trout in here or some crayfish even. Little little bits of crayfish butt in there like a little popcorn shrimp. That'd go over really well. But that's okay. This goes to show you, man, wild foods. Wild foods are not easy to come by a lot of times. This is good. These fiddleheads are amazing. So, I imagine for supper, I will do my three pieces of jerky. Thank you, Chris, by the way. Three pieces of jerky left. This is the best jerky I've ever had in my life. And my rice. I'll do that together. I'll probably end up throwing some leeks in my rice, or sorry, some fiddleheads in my rice. I do have this tiny piece of garlic left as well. But that'll be okay. I mean, I'm not worried about it. I don't need to, need to eat a steak every time I go camping, right? <laughs> but I'm going to put a link up to where you can get um, these titanium cookware, like this pot, or my canteen, which I brought as well. It's all heavy cover. Put a link in the description. Well, I'm all done. I sat here and ate this whole thing talking to you. That was good. That was really good. Fiddleheads for with and garlic for the win. No, 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 no. I'm not hungry. Not at all. <laughs> all right. Well, I hike down to the river. Rinse my rinse my pot out or my pan out, and uh, maybe take a little nap, a little nappy poo. That won't be such a bad idea, hey? This this trip, I want to relax. It's just an overnight, a little bushcraft overnight. I want to relax. I don't want to be going 12 hours like my last trip. So you can understand that, right? Let's go get some water. I gotta refill my water bottle anyway. We'll get it boiled up, clean up my pan, and then. Uh, then it's nap time, I think. Yeah. Old man Joe. Hey, Doug. Let's 
good for cleaning out your pot is sand. Very good for cleaning it out actually. I usually use grass, but when I can get sand, on point. See how clean that looks? <laughs> Lots more mosquitoes down here. All right, bring that up, click boil, we're good. What's really cool about the spot I'm camped at is that you can actually see my red pine forest right there where I'm camped in. And to my right, I'm on this, on this ridge, and to my right, it's all into the hardwoods. I can see ash maple, birch, oak, cherry, elm, so pretty good diverse area. I'll be getting all my firewood from that area. You can see tons of dead oak, oak twigs ready for the taking. I guess twigs is a small term branch, oak branches, but even right here like this. This easy, super hard deadwood, this is uh, maple. I want to bring this back with me. How oh, pissed. So what I am going to do is just pour a little bit of water in my pan. And it, since it's so deep, the pan, it can act almost like a pot. You can boil water in it. I'm just doing that to clean my, my pan for my next use. Just gonna boil the water right on top of there, or put put the pan right on top of there. Boil the water like that, and then I'm gonna put this right next to the coals as well. I'll put it in there after. This is the first time I've actually used this for uh, boiling. I always in I always use the cup. It's no big deal though. I don't care if that gets soot on it. My cup I just cleaned. I scrubbed this with an SOS pad, Brillo pad. And that's as clean as I could get it. I actually like that. It's like a badge of honor to me. I don't care if it sounds silly. I like the, the amount of soot. I literally couldn't scrub that off, guys. <laughs> Usage. And this titanium heats up super quick. It's gonna be boiling in no time. Oh! -ho. Danger. I'm actually going to pour that right back into my canteen. Now my pot is, or my pan is completely clean and my canteen has started to get warm water in it, hot water because of that. So we will just push it a little bit closer there and that'll boil up no problem <laughs> let's go find some firewood I think I'm gonna do that before I take that that little nap my uh, my water's boiling anyways so I'll spend some time getting some firewood got a little bit of energy up those uh, fiddleheads surprisingly enough it filled me up too completely I'm not hungry at all so firewood hardwood excitement okay so these are all oak they don't look the most dense the most rot resistant but they are they're it's actually very dense wood still it's leaning a little bit up off the ground so this is all really good wood for fire i'm just going to uh collect a bunch of pieces like this i'll show you after once i get back to camp how i can tell that it's oak even though it's dead but super dense dry dry enough whereas uh it'll get good coal base and i'll be able to to burn marginal wood I don't need, like I said, fire to keep me warm tonight. It's just like an ambient thing. It's nice and dry too. Oh, 
buddy. Some dry ash. Got a boil. Got a boil. I've got a pretty good haul of firewood here with minimal effort. I've only chopped a few. You saw me chopping that ash, that downed ash. So I told you I'd go through how I can tell that some of this is oak. It's hard. Okay. On this one itself here, you can tell because of the grain. It has sometimes these cross uh, markings, but it has a ton of lateral lenticels and markings. So the, the grain is running this way. You can really see the grain on oak. You can see how dense it is. You can see the, the long running lenticels, if that's what they're called. I'm calling them lenticels. They might be something else. Um, that's one way. Super dense. You get a feel for it after, right? So, so that said, you get the long lines sometimes going across. There's just certain formation you can see in the grain. But then you get this, which is also the same kind of oak. But it's farther gone, right? And you can see powder coming off of it. You can still tell that it's oak. It still has those long grains and stuff. Um, and then also, it looks like it'll be crap. Sorry, just grabbed my knife. The quality of the wood looks like it'll be crap because of how much stuff came off of it, how rotten it looks. But really, it's not true. Once you get down past that stuff, it is solid, solid oak. And you can see that there. I can let go of my knife because it's on a lanyard. Look what a lanyard will do for you, hey? Woo! Anyways, so you can still see, I can't even dent that with my thumbnail a little bit, but it's dense, dense, dense. So no worry about this being too rotten. Uh, I've been looking forward to this. A little snooze time, a little lay down action. The sun's out, as you can see behind me. It's actually a beauty day right now. Beauty time for a nap, eh? I'll check back in with you guys in a couple hours. Oh.